Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in and welcome to another LinkedIn audio event. Today, we are here to discuss a problem for which finding a solution is difficult, but certainly not impossible. And that is related to the impact of human activities that extends beyond harming nature and you know, further it threatens our very own existence. From air and water pollution to ecological disruptions, fueling pandemics, I think our actions have great repercussions and it emphasizes a more sustainable relationship with nature. To preserve humanity, we must change our behavior and our relationship with the environment. To find the possible solutions, I am joined by two very talented women, uh, Ms. Pooja Tendulka and Ms. Shruti Bhargav. Uh, Pooja Tendulka is the co-founder and director of uh, Lemonion Green Solutions. She is a graduate in biotechnology and a postgraduate in environmental sciences. Before starting the company, she has worked on nature-based solutions in Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, and Delhi. Her recent successful projects include Kewale Nala Rejuvenation with the Rotary Club of Walkewadi, Kamandula River Rejuvenation Project, and Kawathe Mohankal with Rohit Patil. Her presence leads to an MOU with a Delhi University Logical Rejuvenation for the Nala. She's a member of the International Association, India uh, Indian Water Resources Council, and a member at Jagriti Enterprises Center, Purvanchal's Incubation Program 23-24. She has authored a chapter in a US-based book on climate change. Moving on to Mishruti Bhargav. She is a dynamic sales and marketing professional, consultant, and sales trainer with a passion for sustainable development and environmental advocacy. As a climate force activist, she actively engages in initiatives to combat climate change. Her dedication to environmental causes extends her to the role as a guest speaker on marketing and environment, where she shares insights on the intersection of business and sustainability. Shruti is a business professional as well as a skilled writer. Articulation, uh, articulating her thoughts on various subjects related to sales, marketing, and environmental issues. Her commitment to environmental conservation led her to participate in the International Antarctica Expedition through the organization 2041, making her an esteemed alumni of this prestigious program. In addition to her impressive professional background, Shruti has embarked on the world's largest entrepreneurial player journey, which is the Jagriti Yatra, which provided her with a deep understanding of uh, evolving entrepreneurial journey at large. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ravi, for such an elaborate uh, introduction. Um, and it's so great to be on this platform uh, you know, which you have created. Uh, you yourself being a distinguished university professor and a dedicated mindfulness coach, you are doing a great job in empowering people by helping them discover their inner strength and achieve their goals. So looking forward for the further discussions. Thank you so much, Shruti. As I mentioned previously, uh, nature and well-being has become much more important than ever in today's fast-paced and increasing digital world. As we deal with the problems of modern life, the stress of always being connected, living in cities and having a busy schedule can hurt our mental and physical health. Getting people to talk about happiness and nature gives us a chance to look into the deep connection between health and nature. Uh, it is, it is important to you know, learn about how nature improves mental health and how it motivates people and groups to make time for spending um, you know, efforts and that connection with nature a priority. 
Also, it is important to recognize the part nature plays in our lives and how bringing in uh, the conversation related to eco-friendly living and protecting nature uh, can help us create a balance in today's world. So it's not just about our health when we look into how nature and well-being affect each other. It's also about how we can make our world uh, healthier and more peaceful uh, for all the future generations. And when we talk about well-being, it's telling ourselves to take it easy and smell the roses, you know. Nature is more than just birds and trees. Uh, it's, it's where we live. So it's very important that we talk about it. And, uh, you know, it, it helps us to remember the simple things in life, which is our heartbeat and the beauty of sunset that doesn't require a filter as such. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's extremely true, Ravi. And, you know, uh, I've been working in this field uh, of nature-based solutions uh, for the past few years now. And, uh, you know, uh, after working in this field, it has opened up like a huge treasure trove of insights for me. Um, so I also remember sitting, you know, very close to a stream, listening to the Zen sound, uh, the clear water that, you know, we could see. It instantly elevates our mood, you know. And obviously, you know, it is very good uh, for the well-being. You know, it impacts you um, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, every bit of action uh, by us, by us living beings, uh, just to say human beings, uh, bring in a huge amount of change um, in the kind of activities that are happening in and around the earth. Um, right. I also remember, uh, you know, when these nine to six professionals especially uh, want mm -hmm. to contribute to the environment in their own little way, because, you know, they are, um, you know, in the hustle and bustle of work uh, yeah. Monday to Friday. And then on the weekends, when we have these volunteer programs for them, where we try to rejuvenate water bodies, uh, mm -hmm. They contribute in their own little way. Maybe uh, they do plantations. Uh, they help us make uh, some loose boulder structures. They help mm -hmm. us pick solid waste uh, near the water body. And they do this on a Sunday morning. So, you know, it is a huge effort. And they are Brilliant. doing this because, yes, and they're doing this because they want to bring in a difference in uh, the environment or, you know, a difference in the planet. And... Um, so there, I still remember, you know, we do a lot of interactions where we talk about uh, them being mindful of water usage or, you know, what can they do as individuals to, you know, bring in change in their own apartments or in their societies. Right. And th that is something that is helping them understand their connection with nature and, you know, what change they can bring in. So. You know, that that is something that we are kind of seeing these days uh, with a lot of people, those who don't really have an academic background in environmental mm -hmm. sciences. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, people have now started understanding that whatever they are giving to the nature is eventually going to come back to them. And right. that is also helping them uh, to be mindful of, you know, how they're living, what exactly they're doing. And mm -hmm. all of this is going to have like a, a chronic impact, it will come back to us after a couple of years. So I think that is right. something that they are starting to understand. And at the same time, you know, taking in these little steps are also making them healthy and also mm. making them happy. And eventually, I believe the planet will be a healthier place to live and we call it our home. So let's see, I'm hoping for the best. So nice. So, uh, you know, having uh, such uh, nice actions happening at your end, uh, Pooja, Shruti, uh, as I understand that you have traveled to Antarctica, what do you feel about the impact as, you know, as humans, what we are bringing in to that part, part of the world? Sure. So, uh, participating in the international Antarctic expedition um, was nothing short of a transformative experience, of course. Um, the moment I had set foot on the icy expanse, the sheer beauty, fragility of the environment profoundly enveloped me. However, yeah. um, there was one side which was so beautiful and unique and untouched kind of, you know, it, it looks yeah. like an imaginative world. However, right. at the same time, on the other end, it might be surprising to hear that Antarctica and its, uh, you know, 
the low temperature are the reason for the myth. So the lower temperature or the changes in the temperature happening across the world, uh, the, the dependency of the seventh continent, which is Antarctica, is very much in relation to the entire world's uh, temperature maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so the, and the relation of the temperature at different places in the world uh, directly or indirectly, of course, has, uh, you know, really has a impact wherein our, our every damn step, everything, every action, good or bad we take in any part mm -hmm. of the world that we live in has a mm -hmm. clear impact. So to share, um, for example, uh, for example, I'll say that, you know, if you choose to use a electric vehicle, mindfully or you right. choose to plant a tree or you choose to use a public transport it every damn step has an impact in a good way having said that mm -hmm. if you are not really utilizing the time of segregating your waste and the keeping that thing at bay to you know for somebody else even that has a very harmful impact so um the continent is connected to the rest of the world through sea. The melting glaciers in the Antarctic Peninsula and rising sea level across the coastal regions are clear yeah. to explain us how the impact is vice versa. Mm. Now, uh, though the initial view of the peninsula and the continent was majestic and surreal, however, it was heartbreaking to witness rocky mm -hmm. area in the coldest part of the world. We saw Got breaking it. icebergs and cracking sound still echoes in my ears. And wow. I can still visualize the crazy scene. So yes, the impact of our actions are real, even at the faraway continent. The choices mm -hmm. we make in our daily lives are very crucial. And the way we dispose, way as I mentioned earlier, uh, re is really, really important. Every step in our business or day-to-day -day living has an importance of how that continent, uh, you know, would go on for us. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And and I totally agree with you, Shruti. You know, the kind of experiences we all have gone through in the past few years, uh, especially during the pandemic time and, you know, these frequent wars which are happening, you know, so much of bloodshed. Uh, it, it is really heartbreaking. Uh, I'm sure that uh, we as humans, we have been knowing this for quite some time that it is we who are going to be the ultimate destruction for our own selves. But I don't know, I mean, uh, where we totally lose out. And all the solutions that I see that as humans we have found in the present or in the past has always had that short-sighted uh, way of, uh, you know, working out things. And I think that will be one very critical thing to look into and possibly you know i would um, you know ask puja also uh, you know just in a few minutes that how she has been uh, you know working out the different projects but before that you know I, I i see that there is so much of action that is not only being taken at individual level but also at the government level and uh, Frankly speaking, we have reached to that stage where a uh, much higher intervention is required because we as humans get into a tendency of living a life in a particular routine basis. And uh, Shruti, you are correct that, um, you know, there are people who are definitely moving towards living sustainable. They are more aware and they really know that what kind of impact their actions are bringing in. But having said that, uh, there was another study which, 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 which found out that people who are aware of um, the sustainable products and the kind of impact, they find a simpler or easier way to tell themselves that it's very okay to not use uh, sustainable products because they're expensive and they may not have the resources to procure it. No, but okay. Ravi, so, to add on this, to add on this, yeah. uh, the a percentage of people who are really, really aware about sustainable way of living or products or their buying uh, way or, you know, having that kind of lifestyle, a different kind of lifestyle is mm -hmm. very, very less in this country or uh, around the world. 
um so i think right. the very very basic thing that we all need to uh, incorporate in our lives is to just take that one simple step which we think can uh, can kind of you know uh, save uh, in whichever way the environment it is not about doing something big or do- doing something mm-hmm. some really 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 big change in in your life it's just something yeah. about really really small things um and right. taking a step towards being aware of what kind of lifestyle can really impact uh, the life around us yeah, mm. that that that's mm. very true shruti i mean awareness is one bit of it but yeah it's it's very important for people to know what little actions can do right yeah yeah because because i remember as as, as children also have always been telling us uh, save electricity save water um uh, and and i don't think you know at during during that time electricity or water was that expensive or or water was having any kind of meter to it you know where i'm staying in dubai the water is so uh, you know i think uh, that 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 brings in much more um uh, governing uh, thought than uh, otherwise but still uh, I, i see that uh, you know people are putting effort and and it's true that uh, the awareness may not be that high level but um, it, it does have a trickle down effect and the society starts following a trend which is setting up in a way where organizations have even started working towards bringing in sustainable products um just one example i wanted to share it just came to my mind i was reading in one article where there are many companies that started recycling plastic but like i said that you know it has a short term kind of a view point uh, these uh, you know processes creates micro particles which gets mixed with water and this finally get consumed by the uh, water animals and finally it is the humans who are eating these water animals and somehow getting affected with those uh, microfibers and which is creating so many diseases so i'm i'm sure that in time we will be able to evolve more and we'll have better technology to um, find a more sustainable uh, way of uh, finding solutions but yes uh, these are the problems which we are facing today so pooja uh, like you have been working in, in the area of uh, uh, you know finding solutions for uh, rejuvenating water bodies yeah uh, what are your thoughts on what we have been discussing yeah um so ravi i would want to touch the part of nature based solutions you know uh, the kind of technology that nature based solutions bring in is something right. that functions uh, without chemicals and you know with very minimal or up to no electricity at all and that is something that a lot of people are unaware about so i have been working in nature based solutions for the past 10 years now and uh, there's still a lot of awareness that is required uh, mm-hmm. i think one thing that i have uh, believed even as a child was what comes from the nature has to go back to the nature it must go back to the nature and it should right. go back totally unharmed so that is something that i believe in and uh, yeah so awareness is one thing that is extremely important because a lot of people believe that technology is something that is you know machine operated or mechanically operated it can't be nature driven so that is one bit that you know i would want to tell people that it does exist you know right. and uh, this involves this is a very promising technology uh because mm-hmm. i started it uh, in my college days researching about it and then now commercially scaling it up through my own company so i've been doing this for the past 6 years commercially and it is doing amazingly well it is helping us treat polluted water bodies it is helping us recycle uh, waste water from you know households and uh, you know industries and stuff like that Mm-hmm. and at the same time you know along with the water part that we are focusing on we are also mm-hmm. focusing on the ecosystem or you know the biodiversity part of it um it includes you know uh, carefully planting the native plant species or you know making sure that uh, collaborations are very important when we are doing this so we work uh, in both public and private sector but when we work in rural communities or in any kind of you know even in urban landscape we make sure that 
we do speak to the local stakeholders and we try to understand what their problems are because you know right. even if we believe that it is a nature driven uh, solution we also have to address the root cause so that is something mm -hmm. that is very crucial and i believe that is only the real kind of rejuvenation or you know the real kind of solution um for mm -hmm. example uh, let's say if there's a community which is entirely dependent on a river uh, for their day to day activities and you know the moment it gets polluted or eventually you know when it starts getting polluted people see right. that there's a difference in their health or you know the overall sure. well being in their daily chores so that is something that sure. they see and i think right. while we are doing the rejuvenation we have to tell them how is this little thing going to impact them you know in terms of biodiversity if there's a fishing community that is dependent on them or you know water quality if they're using the water for drinking or their you know day to day activities and in turn we also have to tell them that this is a reversible process but it is extremely patient taking so you know you have to wait until the results arrive so if a water body is polluted in let's say 5 years we can't bring in change in let's say 5 months it is going to take a little bit of time and True. we have to be patient about it um mm. especially when we do these um um let's say initiatives like plantation drives in um, right. cities mostly so we are prominently working in and around pune and bombay so in those areas um making the awareness part you know most of the times there are these plantation drives where people don't really think what kind of plant species they are planting and at the same mm -hmm. time there are times when you know people see barren land and they believe okay let's do let's make this green so we also mm -hmm. have to understand there's something called as a grassland ecosystem you can't make everything green you need grasses you you mm -hmm. need areas which are not green you know mm -hmm. even for rivers mm -hmm. most of the times when there are these uh, entirely flowing rivers there are also rivers in india which are not perennial at all because mm -hmm. only then the microbiology there is going to thrive so you know we have to understand how the functioning right. of an ecosystem works and mm -hmm. we will know this only when we connect with the community and only then we'll get a sense of you know how are these things associated with each other so that is something right. that i would you know want to tell people that if you have to reach a solution you have to make sure that you speak to the local stakeholders and along with that you definitely have to talk to the experts like let's say ecologist or you know there are these community organizers within the community and the foremost important part is holistic approach to everything you know every little mm -hmm. thing that you do is going to impact everything that is around you so that again mm -hmm. is a very important part and yeah okay. the the landscape is ever changing so you know we have to make sure that we have these minimal environmental impact so you know in the future generations they have good preserved and you know beautiful looking planet so that is something right. that is extremely important ravi yeah yeah this is so nice and it is it is so wonderful to hear all those uh, examples which you just put forward great work uh, puja i really appreciate your efforts thank you ravi and uh, yeah and 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 you know even even i have read that you know frugal innovation uh, or the jugaad technique you know has yeah. has a lot of potential and yeah. and very rightly put forward that um, all technology is not electricity or power driven it is it can be driven by uh, the natural resources as well and can be very very green yeah, yeah. so uh, with whatever you know we discussed and what i was saying previously i think mindfulness plays a crucial role in nurturing a sustainable mindset you know it it involves being fully present and aware of our actions our thoughts and surroundings and this awareness extends to decisions ranging from what we eat uh, to how we commute you know and whenever it's um, you know opting for a eco friendly product or uh, reducing energy consumption or making a mindful dietary choices i think every decision counts and mindfulness empowers individuals to break that inertia of routine you know which i was talking about previously and consider the broader impact of their actions at this moment uh, shruti it comes to my mind that you have you know extensive work experience and you have been very active in advocating environmental conservation what kind of a role do you think the organizations can play in combating uh, global warming 
Uh, yeah, Ravi, it's a very relevant question today's time. Uh, though mm. I have also been very curious in a practical way of what really organizations are doing yeah. in this aspect. However, yeah. uh, it has two aspects to you know inculcate in practice. Um, the, their policies right. created by policymakers, bureaucrats to hold on to, which comes from government mandate. And then comes mm. the initiation which go, go organizations take on their own to contribute towards mm. creating better environments. Now, since the major chunk of pollution is industrial, we keep talking about, you know, individual uh, contribution towards environment and everything, which uh, is, of course, important. And, you know, if million and billion of people are doing the same thing, it does have a larger impact. However, yeah. you know, industries or let's say in this case, organization have a huge responsibility towards uh, creating a, uh, you know, better scenario for people across mm -hmm. so you know if they can mm -hmm. reduce water created through production if uh, choosing the environment friendly packaging is is a uh, is a priority for them the messaging mm -hmm. which big companies create to mass impact a large part of population so the messaging could be through their advertisements on or brand communication in various ways um mm -hmm. other than that they can be right like utilizing the energy efficiently other, other part right. of energy efficiency is uh, using renewable energy uh, in an optimum way. Now, regular check on energy right. efficiency and manpower utilization. Um, mm. Optimizing business travel. Um, mm. Creating green initiatives and setting measurable goals for carbon footprint reduction. Uh, basic right. practice like carrying your own mark. You know, it's a very basic thing in organizations. You keep, you end up I don't know, drinking water or coffee in your own office for how many months in a day and any one of us can kind of count and figure out that and how much, how much, uh, you know, paper mugs or plastic mugs really goes to that waste every day. And so if you carry your own mug mm -hmm. or you carry your own handkerchief mm -hmm. instead of using a tissue paper, uh, it's mm -hmm. a great effort towards reducing use of single use plastic cup or tissue paper from an individual as well as from organization perspective. Very nice, yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, you know while while you were speaking, I was I was thinking on the same lines. Now here in UAE, of course, the rules and regulations are uh, um, you know very quickly implemented, and people are bound to follow because the fines are very heavy. Uh, uh, you know, I, I saw that happening in Abu Dhabi. Uh, the single-use plastic bags were totally banned, and uh, you know the implementation happened rather very quickly, and people, uh, you know got into the habit of understanding the idea that okay it's 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 important that we should stop using that even though it hampered the comfort of the people because generally when you are going out for shopping you don't remember to carry your bags uh, you know uh, like like for example many a times it happened with me initially that i was not carrying those big bags for my grocery but later on when 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 this came in as a rule and you know i had to pay for those plastic bags it came as a realization that it's very important that i should start carrying my bags uh, which which can be used time and again you know and i think uh, the, the same thing can be followed for uh, the coffee mugs as, as as you were speaking so i think this is something we can do on a regular basis and then those are some very nice suggestions should you know, when we when we listen to these suggestions, it sounds very basic, and it they are basic. Mm. But unless they're mm. implemented, they have no impact. And so, unless mm. things become mandatory in today's world, nothing can change. Right. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when when businesses embrace sustainability, they not only reduce the environmental footprint, but also contribute to a more mindful and responsible global community. And, and I totally agree to what you said, Shruti. Uh, Pooja, what is your take on it, please? Yeah. So Ravi, yeah, I think embracing sustainability in businesses, it's very important, you know. Um, and I also believe that it is always, uh, it is very important to think about people and planet and then think about profits, you know. Only then mm. the business becomes sustainable because, you know, in these days, there are these very popular words, uh, sustainability, organic, eco-friendly. These are most commonly used words, but they're also yeah. the most misunderstood ones. 
you know because mm. when we talk about eco friendly for instance uh the immediate thing that comes to our mind is oh this is made out of something that is natural but you know we don't understand how the whole life cycle analysis is you know that needs to be understood like mm. let's say where the raw material is coming from is it locally sourced or you know we've got it uh, from far off or right. what kind of transportation is involved you know is there any energy that is required to make that particular product so i think mm. understanding the resources behind it is very important and lesser the resources lesser the amount of transportation and you know uh, logistics and stuff required only then right. it becomes an eco friendly product so mm. let's say if you have to make a bowl um made out of let's say a plant leaf you can't right. be sourcing that plant leaf from some somewhere overseas and calling it an eco friendly product here in india maybe you know Very so true. i think the, the the resource part is most of the times misunderstood and i think that is something mm. that we have to look into when we say sustainability yeah. or you know embracing sustainability in businesses and right. not only the resource part i would say you know even the operations that we do the kind of implementations that we provide or you know the mm. kind of maintenance practices that we follow needs to be well thought so you know you have to right. think of the resources for sure if there are any you know renewable energy resources available we should harness it for sure and along with that you know if you can reuse the water for the production bit or you know even for the green cover in and around the campus of let's say the production unit or any kind of uh, you know official setup you have that yeah. is definitely going to prove sustainable you know because it is not only sustainable for the planet but it is also going to save you on the costs so you know it is going to be easy on the pockets so i think that mm -hmm. another thing is something that we should think about and along with these practices i think uh, something that you know uh, we can do i mean i have been doing in my own work way is the r and d part the research and the development part where you know okay. we have to think about what alternative materials are available you know if we can you know tweak the designing uh, part of it if we can rework uh, a little bit in the design thinking of the product uh right. you know increasing the shelf life of it and also thinking about the circular economy you know so that's mm. how even the customers will come back to you with their re, you know to return the product so that they can recycle it they can do their bit for the planet and then you know there's this refurbishment thing that will start happening so right. i think you have to be transparent you have to be open to collaboration once you sell the product and at the same time you know we can do partnerships with local organizations so that you know we can do best practices because not only single organization can't do the whole thing so i think the collaboration mm -hmm. is extremely important where you know there are these environmental initiatives where you know it can't be just on papers you have to yeah. you know do it and that is right. something that is extremely important and you know that mm. is how you will be uh, environmentally conscious producers and you will also eventually end up finding um, environmentally conscious consumers so i think that yeah. is how you will be a trend setter you will also you know understand your own responsibility and you'll also make the consumers aware you know what benefits mm. the planet or you know even the future generations will bring in i think that is yeah. extremely important according to me very nice yeah very, very correct and you know i was uh, i was remembering what shruti was saying that till the time it is not forced in the organizations may not um, you know change their way of working uh, the sustainability the whole idea is little vague you know and and i think organizations just to fulfill or have that tick mark for that sustainability component uh, they would have different ways of working it out and also that the whole idea of sustainability is not very clear to the consumers as well so if i see a green bag or a brown bag and and i start feeling that the company is doing some sustainable work which uh, is of course uh, the shortcoming of the knowledge at the part of the consumers and of course the the cheating habit that the organizations are finding you know which is much simpler and easier for today i don't know in tomorrow's time um, how the things will change because consumers are becoming more and more aware and 
like like Pooja, you were saying that there is a constant pressure within the organizations to maintain that sustainability level in order to work along with the other companies. Yeah. So hopefully things would change towards the better. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah. So it is it is crucial that for individuals and organizations alike to come together and recognize that our combined efforts can yield far uh, reaching impacts <clears throat> in communities. Fostering awareness uh, begins with education. Simple, accessible information can empower people to make environmentally conscious choices in their daily lives. And uh, by organizing community events, workshops, and outreach programs, I think individuals can share knowledge, inspire others to join the cause. Collaboration between organizations is equally vital. So by forming partnerships, I think we can pool resources, share enterprise, uh, the, the expertise within the people and uh, implement larger scale initiatives. And this uh, collaborative approach, I think, can maximize uh, efficiency and effectiveness in addressing environmental challenges. Um, local businesses, schools, and I think the other groups can play a great role in advocating uh, the sustainable practices, uh, you know, which can influence the policy changes and uh, encourage environmentally friendly behaviors. So before we conclude, I would like to ask one last question to Shruti, that what do you think could be the ways with which organizations can engage with communities? So uh, as Pooja was mentioning uh, earlier, that it is important yeah. to understand the requirement of the communities first. And uh, mm. you know, then it is crucial to match their requirements and needs and a way of living with the organization's vision. So having right. the correct approach and developing environment friendly approach at the organization level and then taking it up to communities, bringing positive change at individual level is the need of the modified world. So uh, mm -hmm. my take would be that first build organization value, build value within the organization is strong enough and then spread the word, create awareness and manage the persona. Then reach the relevant communities, educate them, convince them for association. Mm -hmm is how the collaboration may work for organizations. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of organizations are actually into this, and this is how the community development and you know a, a large part of communication buildup happens, um, which has been happening. However, to develop a new, uh, new way of living, it is important that what is their need, and because you can't, if you try and come, you know, impose something on the communities, it's very difficult to yeah. make things done. As Uja, you were mentioning mm -hmm. earlier, right, that if you want to get done a river thing around somewhere, you need to understand the local people. You need to understand mm -hmm. that how are they going to be, uh, you know, associated with it. Yeah, because oh, yeah. we are going to come back home. They are the ones who's going to stay close to the uh, water body. So I think it's very important and, to understand. And while that. we are talking about sustainable living. Uh, sustainability is exactly about uh, doing something and having a sustenance about it, not like redoing it again and again. And that's what Pooja mm. was mentioning here, that they are supposed to take care of it. You might establish mm. it. Yeah, that's true. That's true, true, Shruti. Yeah. 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 Great, great. So thank you so much, Pooja and Shruti, for sharing your thoughts and experiences with us. Understanding the interconnectedness between the aspects such as small everyday changes, the mindfulness, sustainability, corporate responsibility, and community engagements, I think forms the uh, strong relationship uh, between the holistic approach to community engagement, uh, societal and environmental well being. Uh, small everyday changes rooted in the, the mindfulness act as catalysts for sustainability enabling individuals and organizations to embrace uh, corporate uh, uh, responsibility. So this responsibility extends beyond internal operations to actively engage with communities, which can foster a symbiotic relationship that nurtures society's growth and environmental harmony. Through recognizing and acting upon the interconnected nature of these elements, I think a more uh, conscious and a sustainable environment can be cultivated where each component supports and reinforces the other towards a collective better future. So uh, with that, I think I will open the platform for questions. 
Um, and I invite uh, people from the audience if they have any questions, please. You may please uh, use the raise hand button. Um, and I'm going to give you the chance to speak. And then you can unmute yourself and ask your questions. Uh, I think it's a good uh, uh, understanding and uh, discussion which uh, you know you people are having it. So I am Shyam, I, I, working with Tata Group, and uh, as I've just heard the word sustainability, we uh, we just recently engaged a very senior level person in our organization to look into the sustainability part. Okay, that's one part. So I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, this recently we have seen this, uh, uh, you know, the pollution levels in, in Delhi going alarmingly high. And mm. it's being a practice which is happening since, you know, years together. Yeah. And uh, and what we have all observed is that while we are all concerned about these, uh, these issues, but uh, you see, we as an individual are really helpless to take any, uh, any major change to to see that impact is you know visibly visible at the ground level and we are still dependent largely on the politicians uh, and you know and these politicians are taking decision mainly guided by the vote bank correct mm -hmm. and the other example we can see the paris uh, you know global warming pact which is still not you know enforced why because we as an indian think that you know chinese and us has already polluted the world to an extent where they have become developed why don't we also pollute to a level where, you know, you know, we become developed, say, in next 30, 40 years, till the time we should be given the leeway. So I'm just trying to understand, you know, see, uh, while we as an individual, while organization, NGOs, you know, uh, they have been working to see that this impact is visible, but can we do it without having a uh, uh, hand holding by the government or while, or, or not hand holding, while, uh, you know, the the decision has to come from the top. The government has to take a decision and then they have to will to implement it. So how do we understand that part from your, uh, you know, uh, experience as of now, you know, you have it in this field. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sham, for that uh, wonderful question. I think this is a very, very pertaining question. Uh, Pooja, uh, would you like to take up this, please? Yeah, 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 sure. So um, Sham, thank you for asking the question. It's a very interesting question and it's it's the need of the hour to understand, you know, who plays an important role and what can we do about it, especially when we are not decision makers. So, you know, coming from my experience of working with both the public and the private sector, I would say initially uh, the awareness part is very important, you know, every each one of us are human beings. And, you know, even if these are government officials or let's say politicians or a local corporator, he might not know the impact of it. Even he needs to read about it. We might want to tell him, you know, how is that going to bring in change? And so I think we have to tell them about the bigger picture. So that is something that I have been doing. Fortunately, uh, or let's say, unfortunately, in the initial years, it was very difficult for uh, us to tell them or, you know, to convince them that this is the need of the hour. Because we have been rejuvenating polluted water bodies for the past few years now. And uh, so initially it was difficult. But now, you know, even they have started understanding the importance of it. And another bit is, you know, they are, you know, little set of people. Let's say they are 500 people and we are in lakhs. And we are in crores. So I think the expertise doesn't really lie with them. The expertise definitely lies with the experts. So I think a good collaboration is, that is something that has helped for us. So I think that is something that is required. And at the same time, if we do it collaboratively with the stakeholders, it can be the communities, it can be politicians, it can be, uh, you know, the ULBs, the uh, urban local bodies. It can be people in and around that particular community. Only then we can bring in change or only then we can put in a solution to that particular challenge. And that is something that has worked for us. Like I said, not in the initial days, but over and over, we've been talking to people. We've been telling them uh, what is this little thing, what, what, what that will, you know, do or, you know, how will that impact the whole thing? And now they've started understanding We've also met some good politicians who literally 
sit with their notebook and pen, take in notes, go back home, get back to us and ask us, okay, how can we go about this? What can we do about this? So I think that is something that is now changing. So, I mean, let's just hope for the best. I, I don't know if that answers your question, but this is something that has come from my personal experience. Great. Uh, Shruti, would you have any thoughts on this? Yeah. Um, so living in Delhi, uh, I myself have been experiencing what Sham is mentioning uh, as an individual. Um, mm -hmm. And this has been happening over seven years now. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this is a particular part of the year when this double burning happens. Now, if that double burning thing is true, um, there are two things uh, on this. One is that can organizations take a step towards collecting that stubble and do some innovative product uh, creation out of it? I don't know if it is really, I am an expert to comment on it uh, about what innovation can happen. But can and can organizations take that up? Because yes, there is political agenda. We all know that uh, there's a political agenda behind all of this. Uh, you know, uh, vote bank is around. Um, you know, risking so many crores of lives around uh, North India. And it's not only Delhi that suffers, it's all across North India which really, really suffers badly. And there's no going back from the kind of impact which is creating the deadly impact. So one is, I think from an organization point of view, if organizations can think of actually working on that stubble part. Rather than, um, rather than you were mentioning, Sham, about not really getting into this diplomatic stuff and, uh, you know, figuring out a way. Yeah, so, like, yeah, Shruti, that... I, I think I, I got your point. I am from the corporate world and I yeah. can just tell you very clearly uh, without making any, you know, ifs and buts, organization will only uh, go into those projects where at least I am not losing money, right? Uh, so, I am very clear. You see, any project, uh, you are knowing that DPR yeah. is being prepared yeah. and to, the, to an extent where you have at least your cost covered your overheads covered then only that project will be viable for us anyway i think that's mm -hmm. a great thought but my little point is that politicians mm -hmm. largely government has to get involved they have to that's appreciate true. the efforts done by various organizations and collectively then you see eventually if you have to make a larger impact the government has to get involved in a true sense i think this is the only little point which i wanted to convey and i thanks a lot i think uh, you people are doing great job I'm really liking this discussion. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Sham, for that uh, wonderful question. And uh, it, is, it is absolutely correct that uh, we have any which way reached to a stage where uh, I don't think individuals or organizations can make much difference. And I think at uh, the political level or at the very senior level, country level, the decision has to be brought in. Um, and then only we can bring in a shift in the way that things have been doing here. Yeah? I would like to tell you that uh, this discussion would be uh, shared with you as it is being recorded uh, parallelly and we'll be sharing it on YouTube and on the social media platform. So if you have missed out any particular part, you can always refer to it. You can connect with uh, us uh, on LinkedIn and we'll be more than happy to help you out with the things. Uh, so I have been conducting this uh, well-being uh, events uh, every uh, alternate Thursdays. So you are most welcome to be part of it. Yeah. So thank you so much for being part of today's event. Thank you so much, Shruti. Thank you so much, Pooja. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, everyone joining. Thank you, everybody. I think Yupal is wanting to ask something. No, he is appreciating our efforts. Thank you, yeah. Yupal. Okay. <laughs>